Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds. In this video, we are going to show you a colony that we have applied 100 grams of thymol to, 33 grams, 33 grams, and 34 grams, one week apart from each dosage. You can use less apigard when the temperatures are hot. So for southern locations, this is an option. Many of our yards we did 50 grams twice which is their typical recommended dose however before we get into this hive look at all of this wing stem there is a huge thick just area of goldenrod back there and i was in nucleus colonies yesterday and big ones as well and they are packing in the nectar and pollens this year totally different from last year loving it all right let's get in here i need to put back in place the inner cover for this side. Now, when we apply the thymol, it does disrupt the queen's lane for a little bit. So after the first treatment or two, I was looking in there periodically and you could definitely see that the patterns were disrupted. This is where we melted the propolis out of the screen with the heat gun and it's only been about three weeks and it's completely packed again. That's bees for you. So let's get into this hive. We are going to take another wash and determine where we are at and did it do a good enough job or do we need to reapply? And I will leave down in the comment the information on how many mites were in the first wash. To confirm it, I'm pretty confident there were six, so we had a 2% infestation, but we will see. I will double check that and make sure that is correct. So 2% infestation, if I remember right, and three treatments. What we want to get is a frame of larvae if possible, and we definitely don't want to get the queen. We have a new queen in here, and let's see what she's doing. All right, so we have, oh, good looking food up in here. That's definitely some fresh stuff. And that's a good little small bit of a pattern. and some nice pollen baskets today good looking bees right there and you're like Cayman why is there so much of a empty gap over here well we split them down after the honey flow after we took the hundred pounds of honey out of this area and then they requeened and so the population dropped quite a bit from us pulling bees and from the requeening procedure then with the treating that slowed down brood rearing but there's still a good 10 frames of bees and i'm hoping to see some good patterns in here that'll beef this colony up for a nice winter cluster that's around 8 to 12 frames so we're seeing lots of food again seeing a good bit of larvae on this side they've capped a little bit of it i might shake this frame right here i hope that it won't shake too much nectar out. Yesterday, gosh, there was so much nectar. Ah, that's what I want to see right there. I've got a bee that's trying to go after the microphone. All right, this tells me what I really want to see from the queen's performance right here. They are bouncing back from that Tymol treatment really good. Some nice brood right there. That's what I want to see. And what we'll do for winter is we'll close all this off. We'll get them what they need. They don't have as much food in this hive as most of the big colonies do, due to the lack of population. But if we need to, we'll give them some food here in the next week or two and start feeding them up a little bit. I'd, I'd like this colony to go into winter with a minimum of 60 pounds. So we're looking at about you know nine to ten deep frames full of food to make that a reality all right lots of larvae down in there the patterns are, are starting to look really good all right just want to make sure i don't get the queen all right all right looks like we're good now did our mite treatment do good enough that is the question open this up right here 
And what's nice about this is I can just place this here, mm -hmm. and if any bees that fall off, we'll just go right back into the colony. Yep, nectar shake. Did you guys see that? It's raining. Most likely goldenrod, you can smell it. All right, now we are gonna take a sample of half a cup. And just knock them down to the corner. And we are going to shake them down into here. And that's too many, so we're gonna kinda level that out. And then drop them in there and that euthanizes them very quickly. And it is a process that I don't like doing, but we must learn. Wow, I can really, wow, I can smell that goldenrod nectar big time right there. That is awesome. Some people don't like the smell of it. To me, it smells more like butterscotch. Some people say it smells like stinky socks. Um, you know, that's, that must be a northern thing. I don't know. <laughs> uh, anyways, so now we're just going to stir this up. I don't like shaking it. Stirring definitely is better. Um, so for the experimental yard we're taking the last sampling on 51 or 52 colonies. Um, actually I think we're running around 50. We had a couple that were duds and we just couldn't couldn't run those. Um, Richard's got all the data on how many colonies and which testing group they are but we did a bunch of colonies the same as this one. So that's going to be nice to be able to take this and also look at those and see how well they performed. We have the Randy Oliver's oxalic acid extended release pads and we did oxalic acid vapor at monstrously high dosages. That one I've got some interesting updates on and I'm not super excited about but we'll be talking about that soon. Alright so you want to do this for about a minute in a circular spinning motion and see where we're at and so far so good I'm not seeing anything there is not a single mite in this wash that is awesome I really hope that when we go through the 12 or whatever many colonies there is in the thymol group we did three rounds of uh, thymol as well We'll find very similar results on control. All this treating and feeding and taking care of your bees, uh, a lot of people view it as excess work and it's bad and all that kind of stuff, but the reality of it is bees need good habitat. In some years, nature provides really good. This is one of those years. Last year, we were feeding at this time and we're going, where's the fall flow? It was difficult to get our bees to do well because they just weren't getting the real stuff. But as beekeepers, our job is to help smooth those transitions out. And just like someone who's a horse um, owner, those horses that you take care of will live sometimes twice as long as the ones in the wild because they're not competing so much against each other. When nature gets rough and callous, um, you're able to step in and go and get hay from another location when it, there was a drought. That's our job. And when mankind actually uh, does what we're supposed to do. Things uh, can be pretty awesome and pretty sweet for us and the environment. Thanks for watching this video. I'm really excited to see what this horizontal hive does throughout this year. I'm hoping to have three consecutive years of success and I'd like to see if we can outperform this year's 100 pound honey crop next year with this fresh queen that's starting to get it going. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.